Good afternoon. My name is Scott Lehman. I'm an aerospace engineer. I'm currently working on uh, developing novel analytical techniques for the evaluation of complex composite structures. I'm here to talk to you today about the recipe we use to ensure that those simulations are believable so that we can keep this thing flying and get our money's worth out of it. Because uh, we're probably going to need to get, use it for about 50 years. First thing we need to realize is that analysis and test or simulations are the exact same thing. And so what we need to do is combine the two into a holistic system instead of treating them separately like we often do. We use a multi-scale building block approach to analysis and testing where an analytical model corresponds to a test on the same scale. This allows us to ensure a high fidelity of uh, correlation between our model and our test. It minimizes uh, the comp allows us to address parameters at the minimum level of complexity and minimize uncertainties in the whole system. One of the fundamental uh, principles is that the analysis needs to dictate what the test configuration is because we need the data of interest from the test to feed the analysis model to calibrate it, validate it, and verify it. And so it needs to be fully useful. The way we do that is we say, well, we need this data of interest and we conceptualize a test that might give us that uh, uh, information, but we're not sure exactly how it's influenced by other parameters in the design space. So then we'll build an analytical model of that test and we'll run a uh, design of experiments type of a statistical analysis on all the parameters in that test, or in that uh, simulation, excuse me, and we'll generate uh, a set of um, influence coefficients and do a sensitivity analysis so that we can identify the key parameters and the, the highest interactions between parameters. What we'll then do is go to our test and design the test so it'll provide the data of interest uh, and more importantly, um, how those key parameters and, and interactions influence that data of interest and we will utilize that to uh, also populate the design space with test data. So now you've got a simulation space that's completely populated over the entire design space, and you've got a test that is populated over the entire design space. All right, but to do this, you've got to understand that there are errors in the system, and you need to identify, separate, and individually minimize those errors in turn, because one influences the validity of the other. The two types of errors are the errors of discretization, your mesh, and the errors of idealization, the numerical formulation of the elements and you find an element code, for example. You need to address the errors of discretization before the idealization or the idealization answers that you get are garbage. The way we do that is we, we apply a fundamental principle that says that the value your model gives you needs to be independent of the mesh. So you refine your mesh until your solution no longer changes with further refinement. More importantly, you need to quantify the errors. You can't just minimize and do something qualitative. You need to quantify the errors, and you need to do this over the entire design space because it won't be a uniform distribution, and that will be indicative of your sensitivities and other things like that. And then only, and only then can you address your errors of idealization. Okay, so what you get in space once you've populated the entire uh, you know, design space with analysis data and test data is a surface, if you will. It'll be multivariate. It's not a simple you know, two degree of fit freedom system here uh, where you've only got two variables and then a payoff function, but you can picture this better. You've got a surface and it's bounded by two surfaces that represent the air. Um, we argue that for the analysis space, those errors are the errors of discretization. And once we've minimized those and we've got a representation of those, we now trust that that surface gives us good values for the analysis. And we've done the same thing for tests. And you know, that's a whole, a whole other minimization effort but it's the same concept. So now I get these two surfaces in space, if you will, my simulation space. And they may not coincide. But because I've minimized my errors of discretization and quantified them, I feel pretty confident in saying that the distance between those two surfaces in space represent my errors of idealization. And so now I can go back to my numerical model and I can change my model form, I can use higher order terms, evaluate different failure criteria, maybe refine my geometry, until those two coincide in space to the best degree possible. And once I've done that, I've got a simulation that's believable, that I can hand down to junior engineers in a encapsulated design environment. It allows me to do a multivariant sensitivity analysis to tell me what the key drivers in my design are, okay? And it allows us to take more junior engineers and get a lot more value out of them. Thank you. <laughs> 